All right. So, what are some magic moments that have happened while you are streaming? Ooh, magic moments, huh? Hmm. Um. So, okay. Some magic moments that have happened to me as a streamer. Um. One of the moments that I, I've had recently is, or not recently. I guess this is. Well, there's a lot of different moments. So here's here's a here's a there's a there's a couple ones that were really just eye opening. So we had a um a, a friend and and she was new to Twitch and uh, she spent time with us on Twitch um just for I don't know it was maybe a like a short week or two right but we got to got to learn about her and get to to know kind of what she was dealing with in life and she had this day she had this day where she was driving for this interview it was a very important interview she really needed the money um it was big in her life. And her car breaks down and she's got to get a tow truck and it's going to cost hundreds of dollars and she can't afford it. And, you know, like it's just a shit day. Right. And after all that was said and done, where does she decide to come at the end of a day like that? And she came to spend her time, her valuable and precious time with us, you know, and we knew the things that had happened. And, you know, when she came back later, like you know, she got the job and like their things are great. Right. Sometimes it's silly small things like that where you're like when someone is having a day if you can be a place that can help them just feel better or feel different or accepted or heard there is so much that you you can do by providing just community space for people to exist you know some life is a pain in the ass sometimes a lot of people don't have time to hear your shit it's just the way it is. And, you know, and, and we have a place on Discord for people if they need to share more and there's, there's places for that. But, but you know, we, we have a good we have a good opportunity to talk about so many things. And I, it was really eye opening to me to to be a place where after the end of a day, um, someone wanted to, to be because they had a shit day and they needed to be cheered up. That was that was very humbling. Um, and I think uh, something else that was a, a pretty big moment for me is um. So with Red Dead Redemption 2, played through all of Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, lots of trolls showed up and spoiled the ending, but you know, you do what you do. Um, it's it's Twitch to some degree too. Um, and you know, I, 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 when I play sandbox games, I meander a little bit. I, you know, and I really just like to, to drink it all in. I usually get a little, burn, uh, a little, little burned out at around 100 hours or so. So I always try to make sure I get enough time to still finish like the critical story components. And so a lot of our community members were there we were spending time together. We're very new and, and much younger at that point. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2 was a, still a new game. And, um, you know, uh, I won't spoil anything here, but uh, some major things happened throughout the game. And uh, a few of them really got me, they got me, uh, you know, feeling emotional, right? Like I, I teared up a little bit. I didn't cry, but I was like, ooh, there, there are some really heavy things that happened. Masterful game in so many different ways in the way that they... They, they allow you to sink yourself deeper into the uh, the relationships of the character and the character to the world and the relationship with the character to himself. And then uh, towards the the end of the game, some crazy stuff happens. And um, you know, I get a little choke up just thinking about it. And uh, like my dad's a cowboy and I grew up with horses and, you know, like I can saddle a horse and drive a wagon. And, you know, I know what double trees are and single trees and you know, like I, I grew up in a way it, being a technology kid and a gamer. My dad was from a whole different place. So, you know, and, and I we made that time to connect, you know. So I, I also have kind of a soft spot for, you know, horses and guns and, you know, like all, all the things that are very, you know, cowboyish in that respect. Western, you know, and um, I get to the the towards the end of this game and they get me a couple of times where like. I mean, I'm just, I got, I got leakage, like tears are coming out. Like they're streaming down my face. Right. And you, you're trying not to use your most, your most awful, like I'm going to just fall apart. Cry baby face. You know, like you got to have a stoic man cry, right? Chat is losing their freaking minds. People are crying. They're crying emotes everywhere. The music is up. I get a little teared up just thinking about it. And, um, you know, people are whispering on the side and they're like, we're right there with you, man. Like, it's, you know, like it was really intense and I couldn't have told you, I couldn't have told you that and it, it's intellectually you're gonna you're gonna win battle royales you're gonna win games you're gonna do well you're gonna complete things things are gonna happen right but i never could have intellectually told you that emotionally not only are you as a streamer experiencing this like i could have easily screwed up in those experiences right i could have started reading chat could have made jokes like but instead i chose to be there to be present to let the art move me and i had a i you know i'm i'm mature in that respect you know i had a crazy cry like i get a little choked up thinking about it and um 
I was not only representing this on stream, but I was also interacting with the content and letting it just wash over me and it moved me. And I didn't think it like blew my mind for like two weeks. I told my dad about it. I told my friends about it. And I had a very personal experience uh, as a man. And it's not, you know, I'm, I'm, um, I'm from a generation. I'm not quite the 1950s man in that respect, but I'm from a generation where, you know, my, my dad, you don't share your feelings. You don't talk about feelings. You know, you just suck it up and do it like old man side. Right. And I've, I didn't have too many issues with that. I, I wanted to be a progressive man, always have been. But, you know, emotion and feeling is a thing. And uh, being able to be present and to share it with chat, to share it with community and to go through that. It was just, it was, it was raw and it was beautiful. And um, I wouldn't have ever thought that that was something I would, I couldn't have told you before I started streaming. It was going to happen to me. Like, I, I could have maybe thought about it, but, you know, you're, you have a responsibility as a streamer to be, to some degree an amplifier um genuine yeah you you know you don't want to necessarily fit you can be a character streamer there's lots of things this, but i i genuinely think that if you if you go to a uh, think of it this way if you go to a museum and you go with with a friend and one of you is like woo, you got your airpods on and you're jamming and playing you like your disco bits you know and you're like you're hanging out like and you're sort of just you know going through the galleries and looking at stuff it's a different experience than, you know, if you're hanging out with a friend and you go and you like decide to drink it in to really absorb the art and feel and wonder and, and be in that space where you can go places and be inspired, you know, and, and I think streamers carry that to some degree. They have the opportunity to to be amplifiers of human emotion and context and, you know, so many things to so many different people.